Today on The Hangout, the boys from the land get rough and chippy in Boston. A costly sweep for the Cavs. And the Clippers even up their best of seven series with the world champion San Antonio Spurs. Plus, the boys from the six get ousted in four. We round up your Toronto Raptors season. Hang out! Basketball fans, welcome into this very, very, very special episode of Hangout. Sadly, your Toronto Raptors season is over, but we're going to break it down right now. We are coming to you live from Akil Augustine's closet. Nope. This is the House of Hoops by Foot Locker, and here is our panel, of course, on the edge, making um, these two guys look so much better, because we look like we just walked in off the street. That's my man, Dan Gladman, fresh off a plane and back. Thank you for coming back so quickly. Y you know, I'm happy to be here, and yeah, we are going to have to do something about our wardrobes here. All right, now, the two well-dressed men in the middle are also two of the best basketball players to ever come out of this great nation. You know and love Leo Rowans from his time on every basketball show in the country. <laughs> and you know this guy from being one of the more well-dressed gentlemen. Guys, thank you for coming. Hey, a pleasure. If this is your closet, I'm taking a few things, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we got you. Don't worry. Shouts out to my Adrian. All Everything right. covered. Now, let's get into it, of course. We're rounding up your Toronto Raptors, the season that was. Uh, they lost the final game, not in the fashion you would want to see. You would expect to see a little bit more fight from a group that showed fight all year long. Here's my question, Leo, since we've got you here, your first time on the show, we're putting you on the spot. Here's a tough question. What happened? Well, you know, really, if you think about this, everything just got out of whack this season. The Raptors weren't winning an NBA championship this year. Yep, that was they weren't going to win the Eastern Conference this year. The best scenario was get to the second round, right? That's, that's what everybody hoped for. Okay, that didn't happen. But there were going to be changes this year, no matter what. Yeah. There's more money available this summer. And, and, you know, Masai made it very clear from the time he got here. Okay, I'm going to see what I got. Now I'm going to trade Rudy Gay, see how that works out. Okay, now we're a winning team. We're winning some games. Let's go. Let's see what that does. Now this year, you're in a whole different situation where you have some uh, serious expectations. How do you get there? Are you going to do it? Who, who can do it? Who can't? So now he's at the point where he said he was going to be two years ago in the evaluation and what he has to do. So there are going to be changes. Uh, and, and there could be, you know, uh, significant changes to this team. That's to be expected, especially uh, with the energy, how things change. Because you talk about this group, it was one of the up-and-coming teams in the conference at the beginning of the year. Quickly, I want to throw this at you guys. Um, you, talk, you talk about this group, and Kyle Lowry is the leader of this group. What happened to the all-star Kyle Lowry? Durant. Well, I'm, ask, I'm, I'm asking the same question. Um, I'm hoping that Kyle was injured. I know he's had some back problems and so forth. I'm hoping that's what it was because, um, you know, many have said that this team goes as Kyle goes, yes. and Kyle really did not go this series, right? Um, and about the whole change of stuff, I wanted to chime in a little bit. I think that, um, you know, we love our Raptors. They had a great year, um, especially at the beginning of the year. But had this series even go to seven, I think we'd, we'd be, we wouldn't be talking so much about changes. But to get swept like that in that type of fashion, game four, this, a decisive game, and to get blown out like that, we, I hope there are changes. I really do See, hope there are changes. I, I just think the important thing people have to realize, there were going to be changes Anywhere. even if they did get yes. to the second round. It's time. It's we, time to take that next step. Okay, so what, what are those changes? I mean, you talk about this group. Allegedly a defensive team when you're coming into the year. By the end of the year, you thought they were one they of the better like offensive Gladman. teams. <laughs> wow. That's, that's not a comment. Hey, all I could do when I played was play D. I, I had nothing else. The, the, the defense did go in the tank. Last year, they were, what, top 10 in the league in defense. And then all of a sudden this year, it, it was paper thin. And, yeah, there, there's going to be changes. And, and I think Gary's right. The fact that it was a four-game sweep, it, it means that more changes than maybe we originally thought could happen. Uh, I think there's talk uh, in, the, in the papers about possible coaching changes. There's six players who are uh, unrestricted free agents. I think five, if not all six of them, are going to be gone. There's, there's so much that can happen. There's so much in flux. It's going to take time for it to take place. But there, there's going to be change. Leo, we want to pick your brain here. I mean, your thoughts on, on, on what specifically these Toronto Raptors need to address. You know, they got some money to spend in free agency. Where do they, what do they do? Well, I mean, obviously, the defense, you have to address that. Because you're not winning in this league unless you can defend. That, that's flat what out. What happened to this defense? Because I look at this group and I see you added two pretty 
positive offensive players off the bench, right? You have Grievous Vasquez pitching in, you have Lou Williams pitching in, but neither of those guys, they're calling Carter's defense. So was, was, was that like just from the front line, the defense fell apart from adding new guys? Because the vision didn't change for me. No, that's it, what's it, was, it was across the board. Um, you know, if you think about it, like, Chemistry is such a fine line. It really, it, it really is. And think about it. When, when the trade happened last year, the chemistry was instantaneous. Now, I've been around this league forever. I haven't seen it where it just happened. Right. It like, you're clicked. sitting there like Absolutely. we're all shaking our head going, are you yep. kidding me? Yep. Like, this, this, just like these guys have been playing together for years. Exactly. And this year, it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like that. And, and so you have to find those glue guys that, like, mm -hmm. John Salmons last year was a glue guy right. at the defensive end. You could put him on a floor with right. different combinations, right. and it worked. Right. You didn't have a guy like that. Yep. Right. You well, know, James and, Johnson was brought in here as a stopper, and I, I was in the arena um, both games here, and the entire crowd yelling, um, you know, play JJ, right? But, um, but a, lot of, a lot of people didn't understand his numbers mm -hmm. and, and didn't really understand the effects. He didn't know the, the plays. Well, right. when a guy comes out and flat out tells you, I right. can't play the four, right. where, which is where the most minutes could come from, exactly. tells you something. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Now I want Absolutely. to throw this at you guys, of course. Mm -hmm. We're heading into the offseason now for the Toronto Raptors. So what are your key offseason concerns? What is the one area of concern, addition with this money? Where do they go? So quickly, your one thing, Dan, we'll start with you. Well, I think they need help inside. Uh, JV is a legit NBA center, but he can't do it by himself. And I think he needs somebody there who can really pitch in on rebounding and interior defense. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you need a, you need a backup five. Uh, one that you know, a, a, and a defensive, a rim protector type of player. I think. Secondly, you need that. You need a four that can really get inside, really bang nice. and, and score around nice. the basket. I'd like to see length at the three. You know, somebody that uh, you look at different guys, Ariza, Her Tobias Harris, yep. guys that have that length that can defend uh, and score. D.D., uh, what about you? What are your thoughts? Well, just looking at the last four games, we got beat at every position. I, I felt like we they were better at every sing single position. That's just how so, I feel. So you're, so, so you're saying about five guys? No, I'm not saying that. I am saying that we got to get better at each position, okay. and right. I'm including coaching. I, I'm not saying that we need to fire a head coach. I'm just simply saying that if you look at the teams that are successful, they have um, assistants that are very experienced. So I don't know if that's something we need to address as well. I don't know. Okay. But I know that the, we, we clearly can win in the regular season. But the playoffs are about experience, it's about adjustments, and it's about attention to details. Okay, all right. Well, hey, we have heard a lot of things from these fine minds, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Your Toronto Raptors will be back next season, and the Hangout will be back again this week on Thursday. We're going twice each week. Stay tuned. Still more to come with Leo Rattles, Dan Gladman, and GD. Hangout!